Coming up on this special episode of South Coast Spotlight, we show you the many reasons to be thankful to our veterans for their service, but also show you that they know how to have a swinging good time. All this and more right now on South Coast Spotlight. Welcome to South Coast Spotlight. I'm Dominique Samario with TV Santa Barbara. In this show, we take you around the South Coast to show what brings your community to life. And thanks to the Pierre Clayson's Veterans Foundation, in this special episode of South Coast Spotlight, we'll show how Santa Barbara celebrates its veterans, not only on Veterans Day, but for an entire weekend. And whether it's the military ball or the Veterans Day parade going down State Street, TV Santa Barbara was there for all the action, and we're bringing it to you right now. Because of the generous efforts of the Pierre Clayson's Veterans Foundation, Santa Barbara celebrates its military each year in a big way. Paying tribute to those who have served, are currently active, and honoring our fallen heroes brings our community together, exemplifying patriotism and respect for the United States military. Our country wouldn't be ours without them, nor free if not for what they do for us. 2013 marked the 60th anniversary of the Korean War Armistice, giving special recognition to those involved. The weekend started off with shoreline sunshine as veterans and community members alike ran together in the International Veterans Marathon. We will want the public to come out and honor the veterans as veterans as a group we're getting smaller every year. And so it's, uh, it's all good, a lot of patriotism here. Ed Graper at 72 on the line, James Knight at 66 on the line. They're going to race it in. You had to see that. The 72-year-old guy just sprinted the last five feet. Beautiful weather and exercise weren't the only reasons people ran. For many, it meant much more. Part of the whole reason I got into marathoning was uh, there's a guy I ran with in high school who graduated a few years ahead of me, and he, was, uh, he served a couple tours in Iraq. And then he, uh, he was killed in May of 2005 in Fallujah. Um, and sort of as a in memorial of him, some, some of my friends in high school and I did, uh, did Marine Corps Marathon a few years ago and sort of that, that took off and sort of that's how I got into running. So sort of every time I run a marathon I sort of think of him. It's actually like really motivational. It wasn't until that last mile when they were handing out the flags, I actually like got a little teary eyed and I was like, oh my God, this is like why we're running. You know. I'm gonna. I'm getting teary-eyed now, but it's like we're we're here, like running, and we're able to do this because like people fought for us, and you know people serve this country every day. And then I read this sign. It was like the first 25 miles were for me, but the last mile is for the veterans. It added a lot of yeah. meaning <laughs> to the race. After warming up and getting a healthy portion of vitamin D, our veterans showed off their dance moves at the 18th annual military ball. A 102-year-old World War II veteran, B. Cohen, kicked off the evening with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you for inviting me. This is a great honor. When we pledge allegiance to the great old flag, remember the words you are saying. It isn't just words. It's a lot of meaning. It has meant that, that to me for years. We'll all pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if anyone can sing God Bless America, please do it. I don't have a good voice. Thank you. In between speeches and dancing, a respected tradition known as the Missing Man Ceremony was performed. I'd like to explain the meeting of these items on this special table. That's really important to me because last year two of my friends were killed downrange and I was able to perform the ceremony for them and I was able to do the same for another family who uh, lost their son this year. So it makes you pause and it makes you remember 
uh, those who continue to serve downrange and those who could never come home. The table is round to show our everlasting concern for our missing men. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives when answering to the call of duty. The single red rose displayed in a vase reminds us of the life of each of the missing and their loved ones and friends of these Americans who kept the faith awaiting answers. The vase is tied with a yellow ribbon, symbol of our continued determination to account for our missing. A slice of lemon on the bread plate is to remind us of the bitter fate of those captured and missing in a foreign land. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears endured by those missing and their families who seek answers. The glass is inverted to symbolize their inability to share this evening's toast. And the chairs are empty. They are missing. And of course, it's very important because it's part of our country. It's part of our service. And it's never just the veteran. It's a country as a whole that goes to war. And it's a country as a whole that comes home. So yeah, we have to remember our veterans and the stories and memorialize their experiences so that we can continue to relate and identify and serve the same cause and purpose. Let us now raise our glasses in a toast to honor America's POWs and MIAs and to the success of their efforts to account for them and to the safety of all now serving our nation. I think that we have a lot of freedoms here. We have a lot of rights here. And I think we have a way of life that we all genuinely cherish. And so, you know, for me, it's we serve to protect that, we serve to preserve it, and that way we can continue to live it. I'm just grateful to be home, to be honest with you, and to be amongst uh, people who are willing to fight for these freedoms. Navy Cross recipient and author Carl Marlantes shared some personal experiences at the ball that are near and dear to his heart. I mean, all my friends said, well, why don't you just stay here? You know, they said you could stay. I couldn't do it. So it was, I think it's called guilt. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't see my friends fighting over there and me not being part of it. I was with Charlie, uh, 1st Battalion, 4th Marine Regiment. And uh, we were actually uh, uh, at the corner of where Laos and the DMZ meet, high in the mountains, maybe 5,000 foot up, uh, jungle-covered mountains. I remember um, looking at the train and trying to get my map out and figure out where in the, you know, I was going. And um, I... Uh, all of a sudden, there are little holes appeared in the, in the fuselage of the chopper. And I went, I'm being shot at, you know? And so the chopper hits the, the LZ and the, the, uh, the ramp goes down. And we had, we had red sacks of mail because, you know, anytime that, that anybody goes out to a Marine position, you always bring the mail. And I come barreling out of that chopper and I dive for the, the side of the LZ and into the bushes. And the chopper takes off, and there's a machine gun shooting at it from someplace. And uh, this red-headed uh, guy who became a really good friend of mine, who was the XO of the company, big red mustache, 23-year-old, his name was Tim Rabbit. He leans down, and he, and he says, you know, they're shooting at the chopper. They're not shooting at you. Have you got the effing mail? <laughs> <laughs> In war, laughter can lift spirits and keep the mind from dark thoughts. But the Vietnam conflict brought needed awareness of an age-old symptom of battle, now known as post-traumatic stress disorder. I can remember so vividly a couple of buddies of mine who I'd served with. Uh, it was probably about four years after we got back, three years after we got back, and they were saying, what's this you hear about nightmares? Do you get nightmares? I don't get nightmares. Well, 10 years later, I'm thrashing around in my bed, nightmares, night sweats, I mean, all of the, all of the symptoms. And uh, we didn't know what it was. I mean, we had never heard of post-traumatic stress. I mean, it just, and my wife, first wife, I mean, the marriage didn't last uh, primarily because of this issue. Uh, she just thought I was going crazy. And I thought I was going crazy too. I thought, I used to be this pretty mellow guy. I can remember, I lived in Santa Barbara for uh, just a few years, and it was, it was an intersection here, and some guy came up behind me and blasted the horn. And I, because I was slow off the mark, I was trying to figure out which street to turn on to. And when I came to my senses, came to my senses, I was on the hood of the car trying to kick his windshield in. And uh, my little girl Sophie was in the car, and she's, 
gee, what's daddy doing on that car trying to kick that man's windshield? You know, you, and I literally, I had no memory of leaving my car and basically going into the attack. And one of the things that is important, I mean, and I became to realize, and a, and a guy is a Zen Buddhist named Joe Bobro sort of put me on to this. He said, you know, if you have ghosts, they haunt you. Your job is to turn your ghosts into ancestors. How do you get the ghosts out so they don't haunt you anymore? Because ghosts are unconscious. You're not aware that they were, and that's where I was. I wasn't aware of these ghosts that were inside wanting to come out. But that was what writing the book meant. Sharing stories eventually turned into sharing the dance floor, and these veterans were having a swinging time. Assembling a small army of past and present military, infantry vehicles, and vintage aircraft flyovers for the Veterans Day Parade is another way the Pierre Clayson's Veterans Foundation shares its love of America and patriotism with the Santa Barbara community. To finish off the weekend festivities, hundreds gathered at First Presbyterian Church for a concert of patriotic classics that the entire community would enjoy. I hear God bless America, or I hear America the beautiful, I'm ready to burst into tears. I just feel that way about our country. America is a willingness to share our wealth, our people, our humanity with all the rest of the people in the world. I'm fortunate that I have among my friends some of the finest musicians in Santa Barbara. I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous voices, wonderful musicians willing to put in their time on a holiday to honor our veterans. The sweet sound of liberty comes at a price, and Major General Philip Connolly remembers it all too well as he accepts a proclamation of honor from Representative Lois Capps. We're all given orders to uh, go to uh, Korea, because the Korean War had started three weeks after we had graduated from the Naval Academy. Well, all I can say is that in, in Korea, there are all kinds of good people but boy, we were not prepared for that war, and we lost a lot of people because of it. And I certainly hope that the Congress that gave me this today keeps that in mind, and we never, never wind up again in that kind of situation. Thank you very much, and tell Congresswoman Caps that I really appreciate it. <laughs> To Colonel Jack Harris, a proclamation of honor from Senator Hannabeth Jackson didn't just belong to him. It is with great pride and great honor that I present to you a certificate of recognition from the state of California for your outstanding contributions to our country and to our community throughout your life. Thank you, sir, for your service. I'm very pleased to accept this in honor of all veterans, not just the Korea veterans. Thank you. Though some give their lives and may never return home, on Veterans Day, we never forget those that serve to keep America free.
TV Santa Barbara would like to thank the support of the Pierre Clayson's Veterans Foundation for making this special episode possible. And if you have an idea for a future episode, email us at info at tvsb.tv. And until next time, get out and explore your South Coast.